Hi. We are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, the, what you were just talking about, what I'm thinking is, is is along the same lines. I'm really thinking about resistance and how, what is it that makes us resist and feel so fearful of all that is good in the vortex? So. I well, that, that's really an interesting question because what makes us fearful of what is good? Well, that's a totally illogical question, isn't it? Why would I fear something that's good? So stay there just for, why would I fear something that's good? You wouldn't, you would never fear something that's good. But if something is good and you're looking in opposition, you're going to feel what you call fear. Follow that? You don't fear what is good. You just feel fear when you look in opposition to what is good. So when you feel fear, you're not looking at what's good. You're looking at the absence of what you think is good. Do you follow that? Yeah. Um, that's the thing to know about your guidance system. In other words, anytime. So, so let's start in a, in a really obvious place. Who you really are is love. When you are focused upon someone and not loving them, even though you may have good reason by your physical standards, your choice to push against them has you out of whack with the love that is really you. So the emotion that you call hate or anger is nothing more than the disallowance of the love, which is natural. So what if that disallowance is not directed externally but directed internally well, so it's very difficult for me to choose to love myself and accept myself for the magnificent being that I am well you know you and don't so I I, that's what I resist you're, you're not alone in that most people are harder on themselves than everybody else all put together because you've been trained that way by people who looked at you with disappointment because you didn't make their world complete. In other words, so many people you've been bumping up against have been looking for love in all the wrong places. And over time it wears you down as you are unable to be that impossible thing that they're asking you to be. That's, that really is a perfect answer, but very hard to hear sometimes. In other words, you've trained yourself away from caring about your alignment and into caring about their approval of where you're at. So when you find yourself having a hard time appreciating yourself, we say it doesn't matter what the object of your love or appreciation is. It only matters that you have one. And Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to start with something easy, something that's e like a, like your cat or your dog or some, someone who has never betrayed you except for that one accident on the carpet. <laughs> In other words, someone who, someone who, who is easy for you to love because loving is alignment. And so as you find objects to love and you find that object to love and that one and that one and that one before long you can turn the lens on yourself and still feel love so start with the easy things first one one more um you see we we can stand here and say that's just ridiculous that you wouldn't love you but that doesn't help we can stand here and say it's so easy for us to love you but that doesn't really help we could even tell you all of the reasons that we love you but you know what's interesting about that we don't love you because you're wonderful we love you because we love now is that painful some people say, oh, well, Abraham loves everybody. <laughs> no big whoopee when they love you. <laughs> they love everybody. But that's what we want you to come to. In other words, we, but it's natural to love. And we are so accustomed to, to the fullness of who we are that when we see you, oh, there is a plethora of things that we get to enjoy because that's what our vibrational bent is. So it's so easy to see, you see. 
So we don't ask you to behave this way and this way. We don't say be lovable so we can love you. We say we love you, be however you choose to be. Our love for you is not dependent upon your behavior. Our love for you is unconditional. And that's the way we want you to be. We want you to experience the deliciousness and the naturalness of loving in spite of what's going on. You see, that's why so many people think that they need to control so many things because when I look at that, I feel love when I look at that, I don't. So we need to wrestle that to the ground and kill it because I might see it again and it might force me to not feel love, which doesn't feel good. So we need to eradicate that. We need to wipe that off the face of the earth so that I never have to feel this way again, because I have no ability to focus over there as long as that exists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say. So that's what we're, we're saying the same thing to you. You just have to decide how you want to feel and then just start with easy things until you get the hang of it. People have trained each other. People have trained you. They've said, they've said to you, if you behave in this way, I will love you. And so you just knocked yourself out being lovable, just knocked yourself out being lovable, but you, you but you didn't, weren't knocking yourself out being in alignment. So you never felt the love that you thought you were eliciting from others. That's why it's so confusing. You see, there have been times, one time in particular where I can remember being very much in alignment and understanding exactly what you just said and how operating from that place of being loving and loving myself and able to love everything that kind of came across my path during that time, things just fell out of the way like dominoes. I mean, it was extraordinary. Oh, it's nice that you have that memory because that's exactly what we're talking about. And, but, and that's where the fear begins to come in because it happened so fast and things went so beautifully, so quickly. So why do you fear that? I, that? that I panicked. Like, uh, th th I but think the see, deserving came in. Like, I don't well, deserve maybe. all this. So wonderful. you did shoot yourself in the foot, but you wouldn't yeah. be so likely to do it next time. In other words, now you understand. Now you understand what happened more. You see, it's really lovely when someone loves you and holds you as their object of attention and just showers their love. It feels really, really good. But now you are immediately dependent upon them and their focus over which you have no control. And before you know it, you and they are in bondage. This wasn't with another person. This was, this occurred as a function of my actually forgiving several people who had hurt me early in my experience. Well, do you know what forgiveness is? Forgiveness is withdrawing attention from the thing that's keeping you out of the vortex. Mm -hmm. That's all forgiveness is. It's turning your attention to something that puts you in the vortex instead of towards something that keeps you out of the vortex. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness is just returning to your vortex. That's all mm -hmm. it is. It's, it's being who you really are. Right. So really the key is to think in terms of what you are presenting, not what is being presented to you. If you want someone to love you, you are looking for love in all the wrong places. If you want to find objects of attention to love, now you're really onto something because there are so many. One night in an effort to just get into the vortex in the midst of some troubling things that were active in Esther's experience. She just focused upon her new pillow and, and just appreciated that pillow. It sounds ridiculous that the pillow was her easiest uh, object of attention. It wasn't snoring. <laughs> It wasn't asking anything of her. In other words, it was just something to softly appreciate. And that's really, that's really all that, all that get into the vortex requires is just finding something that you can focus upon that is absence of absent of resistance and holding your attention upon this thing that is absent of resistance for as little as 17 seconds, at which point it will join something 
equal in vibrational equilibrium. Then if you are able to maintain it for another 17 and another 17 until you pass the 68 second mark, now you are effectively in the vortex. Now it doesn't mean that you'll stay, but it means you're effectively in the vortex. And as you accomplish that again and again and again and again, before you know it, you feel like this loving being that you are. Something that we've been dancing around in this conversation and the one before and even the one before is that every subject is really two subjects. It's like picking up the stick and on one end of it is really what you've become, all that you've, all that you've become on the, on the active subject. And on the other end of it is the exact opposite of that because every wave is that which is wanted in absence of it. So when you really want something, the other end of it is really unwanted. When you sort of want something, the other end of it is sort of unwanted. Mm -hmm. they, they are equal in their, in their power. And so when, you, when you've experienced something that you've wanted, something that you knew from the day you were born and something that you've been seeking every day since, because innately, you know, you're supposed to feel like that and have been reaching for that. Once you sort of blundered into it because you didn't know what combinations of thoughts or events or situations caused you to be that cooperative component to all, component to all that alignment. It's logical that in the experiencing of the ecstasy on that end of the stick of alignment, that your rational rational mind would say, but what about the other end? It's, it's what people mean when they say they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. It, it, when something feels so good, then there must be something lurking. And right. what's at right. the heart of that is, is a, an inability to love yourself in the way, in, in the way that the source within you loves you. We, we want it to be easy for you to expect wonderful things to happen to you. We want you to be so in tune with the source within you who adores you unequivocally and with, without any strings attached, just loves you because you are there to be loved and you are lovable and you are a viable part of the source energy itself that is love. You are love. You are loved. You are love. You are loved as you practice the feeling of that you'll relax into a, a feeling of well-being that cannot come from any other place it's that thing you were describing and it's a love beyond someone who is physically focused shining their love on you in other words someone can be physically focused and get themselves all geared up to give you the undivided attention of their love and as it's being showered around you, there has to be a conscious recognition that this can't continue because I cannot continue to be your only object of attention. So just your rational mind in and of itself says this feels so good and I don't ever want it to stop, but I know it will because no one can hold you as their object of attention in that way. No other physical being can do that. And that's why we say looking for love in all the wrong places. You don't want to count on that kind of love. It's nice when it comes, but it's not where you're reaching for your resources. It's not where you're, what you're reaching for you're reaching for alignment with the fullness of all that you are that will never let you down never gets squirrely never gets distracted never forgets about you mm -hmm. never is unaware of you always is there shining bright offering a signal always available for your alignment there it is always available for your alignment, which is the feeling that you were describing to us and everybody else in your world, no matter how wonderful they are and how much they love you. And many of them do, they are never going to be always available to you because that's not, that's not their mission for you. They came for their exposure to life and they have an inner being always available to them. You see, when people say they're in love, you know what's happened? They have allowed themselves to be each other's object of attention and have connected each other to their own respective inner being. In other words, the accurate thing to say is I love you because you make it easy for me to align with the whole of who I am. Right. Right. That's the accurate statement of what being in love is. And what we would like to say to all of you is don't make it so easy for people to find their alignment 
because you spoil them. You make them look for love in all the wrong places. If you be very lovable, they'll forget they've got an inner being to tune to and they'll hold you responsible for the way they feel and then it all goes south from there. Right. Really good. Thank you.